and welcome to today's uh, short video on chapter 13.1 and 13.2 in the book and section 14.1 in the syllabus which is coordination and response and here especially going to be looking at the human nervous system it is from our experiences one of the harder chapters there's a lot of new words in this so um, it's a very good idea to read the chapter in the book as well and don't only rely on this video all right, let's get started. As you can see, both in the core and the supplement here, there are quite a few new things we have to learn, especially about nervous signals and neurons. And in the core, it's mainly about how the human nervous system works. We're going to talk about the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system and coordination and response. You're going to learn how to work with motor, relay, and sensory neurons, and how to describe a simple reflex arc. Uh, and we're also just going to know what a synapse is doing in a neuron. For the supplement, for the extended, there is a lot more work on how a synapse and nerves are actually built, how neurotransmitters work, uh, which is very exciting, and also to have a little idea, especially when we come to the drug chapter, on how some drugs can interact with the nervous system, with the synapses. So we have a lot to learn, so let's get going. So all mammals and quite a few other animals have a central nervous system, which means they have a brain. But as I said earlier, surprisingly many animals and organisms do quite well without a brain. But why do we need nerves? Why do we need to be able to coordinate our responses? Well, just right now, if you're sitting listening to this, you get a nervous signal from your eyes and you get a nervous signal from your brain interpreting what I'm trying to tell you. Just that is the role of the nervous system. Me having thoughts here and having them communicate to my vocal cords and my lips to be able to pronounce the words are some actually quite um, advanced nervous systems. Me all the time waving my hands around because I'm unable to sit still it's also my nervous system sending signals to my muscles on what to do so all our life is experienced through our nervous system anything you touch anything you do anything you hear smell feel it's all connected to our nervous system and that is why our nervous system is so important and why it is so important to understand what it does so that is what we're going to try to get into here what is the role of a nervous system and how does it work? So here we're looking at a drawing of a nerve cell from the book. It is on the book of page 162. And here we see that a nerve cell is like any other cell in our body. We have a cell membrane and we have a nucleus and we have our cytoplasm. But beside from that, nerve cells are very different than other cells. One is their size. They can be very, very long, um, much longer than any other cells in the body. They can be like so long you can actually see them without a microscope, uh, quite long. Some of them can be up to like a meter long with the axon here. So you have a part up here we call the cell body where we have the dendrite, the cell membrane, the nucleus, and the cytoplasm. And then we have this long, long line here, where we have our nerves traveling. Uh, around here, our nerve here is isolated by the myelin sheet. Myelin sheet is like this isolation, like isolation around a wire. And that makes uh, the nerve signal much more efficient when it runs down the nerve. So without the myelin shelf, the nerves would not be very good at transferring an electrical signal. But since they have these myelin sheaths, they are very good at transferring nerve signals fast. Inside here, you see that there are these small nucleus here, uh, which makes the nuclear, um, which makes uh, the myelin sheaths, it's because they need to be able to be made here. And down here in the end here, we have the nerve ending, which we'll get into in detail later what it does. So this is one large, very complex cell 
with one cell core here, smaller cores here. Here up is the dendrites, um, where we sense things, and then we have the axon here, where the nerve signal will travel. And much more about this later. So we're going to have a look at the nervous system of all vertebrates, and mammals and humans are also a vertebrate. Uh, all vertebrates have this system where we have a brain and we have a spine, the spinal cord, and this is our central nervous system. But then we also have the fibrical nervous system here, which are the nerves that are running to and away from our central nervous system. Now, as we're going to talk about later in detail, it's quite important that nerve signals can run both ways. Uh, and how they do that is something we're going to go into detail later. But, for example, if you feel something here in your arm, well, the signal then runs through the nerve, through the axons here, to the spinal cord. That information is then sent to the brain. The brain then decides, well, what should we do with that information? And if there's something that needs to be done, the hand needs to be moved, for example, if I need some more coffee, well, then the signal must be sent from the servo, central nervous system, down through the spine, and then a signal is sent to the muscle to move the arm. So this is the role of our two nervous system. One is to provide information in, and then you have the central nervous system who directs the flow and takes decision on what to do. Now, there are some special cases which we're going to talk about now, which are called re reflex arcs. So we're here going to have a look at the schematics of what we call a reflex arc. And this, is, of course, is a much simplified version of what actually happens. But it is illustration used in the book and in the syllabus, and it's very good to understand. Now, let's say, for example, that you put your hand on a hot plate. By the way, don't do it, but if you do, uh, there is receptors in your skin that will immediately start feeling, okay, something's wrong here. Your hand is now touching the flame that's not good. They send a signal of pain. And again, all signals we feel are nerve signals. So they send a signal in here to the sense neuron, which then sends us, okay, this is way too hot. Something is happening. That signal is then sent to a relay neuron. In the book here, they just write it as one. What actually happens is the nerve signal then runs through the nerves, into the central nervous system, into the brain stem, and then uh, the brain, or in this case here, uh, just a reflex arc decides what needs to be done. And what it does is it then sends a signal to a motor neuron, in this case here, your arm, your shoulder, that whatever is hurting, move. And when the motor neuron hits, when that impulse hits the muscle, we call that the effector. It hits the effector and the hand moves. Now, this can be done with very little conscious effort. It's not like you have to think about, hmm, my hand is on fire. I think it's time to move it. Brain, please send a signal to biceps to contract. That's not how it works. For many of these signals here, this is completely what we call a reflex. We don't have to think about it. If you touch something hot, you move your hand. If you fall, you do something. If you practice a move, for example, if you play tennis, you don't have to think about how hitting the ball. It's become part of your reflex arc. The same with many other sports. Do something enough times and your body knows how to do it. I think you all try it when you're out running in the forest and you like you stumble and you don't realize how, but you yourself you you caught your balance again and kept running. It's not like you have to think about it, it's integrated into your reflex arcs. So this is a very complex uh, scenario, which here in the book is just put in this very simple uh, scheme. But it's a good idea that you learn and understand that receptor senses sends the signal to the sense neuron, the sense neuron sends the signals to the relay, the relay and then decides, send a sense a signal to the motor neuron, which then makes send a signal down to the effector, the muscle, which then moves. So this is in a very simple way how the human reflex system works. 
So here we have my badly drawn version of how nerves interact with each other. If you look at the reflex arc, for example, you look carefully that the neurons involved in the reflex arc do not connect with each other. But there is a small gaps, which we call the synapse cleft, which I drawn quite badly in paint here. So what happens is that as a nerve signal runs down a sensory neuron, and what actually happens is we have a flux of irons going one way and the other way across the cell membrane here, which creates an electrical potential. As that potential reaches, reaches the end of the sensory neuron here, what we have here are these small vesicles here, something they're called neurotransmitters. Those neurotransmitters then, um, they diffuse when hit by the signal here across the gap in here into what we call the narrow gap here. And then they are taken up here by the relay neuron. And they attach themselves to a new relay neuron here. And that will then start a new signal here in the relay neuron, transferring the nerve signal. The smart thing about this is that this makes sure that the nerve signal can only run one way. It's not like it can run back. So in this case here, the nerve signal can only run this way. It can't run back because the synapses here, they work like a kind of one-way gate to make sure the signal only goes one way. Um, quite a few drugs uh, interact uh, in this gap here, especially some neurotoxins. They go in here and interact with those. Um, so that is an very exciting story that you can read up on if you want to.